गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द जीनोम क्रोमोसोम एंड जीन्स एंड व्हाट इज द मॉडर्न कंसेप्ट ऑफ जीन इन दो स्लाइड्स वी हैव बीन एम्फेसाइज्ड स्पेशली ऑन द यू कैरेटिक जीन स्ट्रक्चर इन विच वी हैव नोटिस दैट यू कैरेटिक जीन्स मोस्टली आर different from the prokaryotic one in the presence of introns so these introns are the basically non coding part we have discussed and definitely a question come across our mind then what's the need of these introns within the gene if they are non coding if they are of no use then why nature has kept them within the gene why nature has interrupted the genes especially in case of eukaryotes so in the early studies it was reported that introns are uh, useless in uh, useless dna sequences found within the uh, genic sequences but after that time many of the studies have been conducted because nature doesn't select useless nature always discard useless thing it's the prime principle closed within the natural selection hypothesis so it is very important that billions of the forces do not select a useless phenomena or a useless thing and that kept continuing uh since last 4 billion years ago when the first cell might have been emerged the clear evidences have been of the 3.8 billion years but still we can consider that in the billions of years the useless things must have been destroyed till that time but we know very well they are quite interesting that the introns have been still reported so we are going to consider basics of the introns then what are the types of the introns that have been discovered till date what is the biological significance that has been deciphered till date of the introns because we we don't know each and every aspect of the significance of anything on the earth in the 100% manner or in the full manner we are continue to strive for such kind of significance so that we can add our significance and we can uh, strong we can make our concept stronger than the earlier one and then after we'll discuss the alternative splicing this phenomena is possible because and because only presence of introns if there might have been no intron there is no alternative splice splicing kind of situation so one by one we are going to discuss in the first case we are going to consider the basics as we have already reported say if this is a gene this is the intergenic part and from here to here is reported as a g in this gene basically there are two parts one is the regulatory part that has been mentioned here in green that is also known as promoter it is the simplest kind of regulatory part that has been mentioned we know very well gc box cat box oct box kind of situation the upstream uh, elements so called upstream elements have been reported in answer kind of elements have been reported so all these are covered under the regulatory sequences but still all the genes are having promoters that's why we are taking the commonest part of a gene and from here to here that means from this exon boundary to this exon boundary this is called structural gene that means this is the part against whose rna would be designed by the rna polymerase so this is the part that is to be transcribed transcribed into primary rna now these are the intronic sequences that means or the coding part is found interrupted by the presence of introns okay so this is the overall situation that we need to understand uh the introns have been first reported in globin genes in case of mammals and uh, ovalubin uh, ovalbumin gene in case of chicken they have been called introns because they are 
found reported as intervening sequences dispersed within the expressed sequences tagged as exomes. So, majority of eukaryotic uh, genes do possess the introns and the presence of intron is the rare feature in case of prokaryotes. What kind of introns uh, found in prokaryotes that we will consider in the next slide. So these are the introns. Now we are going to consider first important point is they are of variable size. They may be of 50 nucleotides, they may be of thousands nucleotides in the length and sometimes their collective length is greater than that of the total length of exomes. So it is pretty interesting. And important thing is also lie in the fact that, for example, there is a gene X. For the gene X, the introns found within that gene are not necessary for its expression. So more important thing is, Introns, if are found in a gene X, they are not required for the expression of gene X at all. But they may have different kind of significance that we will discuss later. Anyway, in all the cases, we are going to consider the types of introns. That means what kind of introns are found present and where they are found present. So basically, in mRNA, three types of introns have been reported. These three types, among these three types, the most common one is nuclear introns. These introns are found in the nuclear genes. Okay. And these are the most common one. They are being spliced by the spliceosome. Sometimes these are also called spliceosomal introns. So, all these RNA are basically protein coding. Okay, now the this is the first discovered intro. Then after scientists found in case of uh, mitochondria and then after in chloroplast and also in some of the bacteria, group second and the group one. These group second and the group one have been reported in mitochondria and chloroplast. Group one also reported in mitochondria and chloroplast. In this table, it has been mentioned that group 1 is already uh, reported, reported in rRNA genes. It's correct, but they are also found in uh, group second, uh, sorry, mitochondria and the chloroplast genes. So, group 1 and group second, both are self-spliced. We will discuss in detail that what is the meaning of self-splicing and what is the meaning of spliceosomal splicing. There is a separate chapter RNA splicing and we will discuss later on that. So these are the three different types of introns found reported in uh, mRNA. A single a small intron has been reported in tRNA as well. So that tRNA genes are basically spliced through enzymatic removal or this is not appropriate to say splicing here rather than we should consider enzymatic removal. A splicing means a splicing means the transesterification reaction involvement and removal means there is no kind of transesterification reaction that we will uh, discuss in very detail in the RNA splicing chapter. So next we are going to consider the biological significance that is the most important thing so as the stories were coming across our ears that introns since of its known coding genic nature it is almost useless this is not the situation scientists tried a lot and they found many important things the first important thing uh, in case of uh, evolutionary significance it was reported that the introns provide the selective advantage by increasing the rate at which coding sequence in different exons of a gene can resort the recombination. In simple words, what it means? 
it means because of the presence of introns recombination rate can be increased and if recombination is increasing definitely the new kind of combinations are being selected and we can say that the pace of evolution is increasing so for the evolution introns are very very important secondarily since the introns are non genic in na non coding nature so many of the mutations have been generated there and they have been accepted as such because there is no harm of those mutations there because ultimately introns have to be removed so if any kind of mutation is uh, occurring within the intron it is of neutral value that's why the neutral mutation rate is increasing and such kind of mutations are being accumulated so this is also an important feature especially to study the evolutionary rate so introns are very important in the evolutionary studies so we have completed one important point what is the evolutionary significance of introns now we are going to dis uh, discuss the different and important story and that is that we we'll, that we will discuss after the point number 3 the point number 3 is concerned with the size of the intron as we have discussed in this slide that they are highly variable in size and many of the introns are having thousands of the nucleotide pairs in their length that means we can say there are many introns which whose length are very much within the intron there have been reported some of the genes for example for mirna for example for endonucleases for example for reverse transcriptases and all these are reverse transcriptases uh, and uh, also we uh, we can consider transposome transposes genes are also found reported in the group 1 and the group second introns because they are also the transposomes so more importantly transposon and reverse transcriptase beautifully define the phenomena of jumping gene that means transposition and they are also contributing in evolution similarly mirna reverse transcriptase endonucleases they all are having regulatory role for the gene expression so the thing for which scientists have been uh, debated for a long time that it is almost useless the vice versa has happened this is considered today is one of the most important thing we didn't know about the significance of introns that doesn't mean they don't have significance so this is the most important thing another important thing is the introns in many kind of tissues are having the tissue specific promoters that means within the intron there is there is the evolution or there is the origin of a promoter and a different kind of gene might have been evolved within the tissues so the diversity in the uh, gene expression is basically provided by such kind of promoters similarly these are the sequences that enhances the accumulation of new mutation so we have discussed about the basic significance of the uh, introns here important thing is alternative splicing because of the presence of intron alternative splicing may happen and alternative splicing make a gene multi talented that means a single gene depending on the situation may generate a different kind of product so what is the alternative splicing we can consider this phenomena in this particular sign for example this is a gene consisting of three exons interrupted by two introns the normal splicing when happens these two introns have been removed for example transcription occurs primary transcript contains both of the introns after that they have been removed and exon 1 exon 2 and exon 3 all the information in the coding region have been uh linked together and a complete long product 
protein product has been synthesized. So in one situation, if this gene is generating this one, and in another situation, this gene is generating the smaller product from the same gene, but in the different situation, but in under the different regulation. So such kind of splicing, that means alternative ways of splicing are there. That's why it is called alternative splicing. This product and this product are quite different because this product is designed by the information of exon 1 and exon 3 only. The exon seconds information is not considered utilized here. And approximately 75% of genes do show the alternative splicing. In conclusion, what we can say, we can simply say that alternative splicing is the phenomena that basically generate more than one kind of processed RNA. See, processed RNA. Because the primary mRNA is the same, but the processed mRNA is the different. So, the phenomena of generating more than one kind of processed mRNA from the same kind of gene is called alternative splicing. That means it brings about the diversity in gene expression. So this is the overall uh, biological significance of the introns that we can consider. It increases recombination, it accumulates mutation, that's why it is contributing to the evolution. Similarly, it is contributing to the alternative splicing. And what's the utility of alternative splicing? Alternative splicing have the capacity or it is a kind of art or the phenomena that can respond immediately to the uh, unwanted or never happened situation. So it may have the potential to uh, answer some en uh, environmental catastrophes or the environmental unhappenings. That's why they are contributing to the living organism. That's why such kind of phenomena might have been accumulated among the 75% of genes. Thank you so much. Stay home. Stay healthy.